if we can bring in Reverend uh, Dr. Charles Pecker. He's the senior minister for the Pine Hill Congressional Church in West Bloomfield. Great to have you with us today. Thank you, thank you. How has the past year been for you and members of your congregation? I'm going to avoid using the word <laughs> unprecedented because I really want to retire that word. But <laughs> Don't we? Um, that but and it pivot. Has, no, <laughs> please. It has been uh, challenging. It has been at times difficult. Um, it's been it never lacked for excitement and um, and and it's uh, actually encouraged us to do some out of the box thinking. A lot of out of the box thinking. Are you back in person as of yet? No, no. We have been uh, the, the Pine Hill Congregational Church has been uh, has been remote, has been virtual um, since March fifteenth of last year. And we uh, are hoping to get back into the building sooner than later, but we are really trying to be very cautious in our approach. So we are still meeting via Zoom every week. And we do know uh, some churches have opened the doors to allow for people to come back in, but we also know that so many members of the congregation do make up the elderly population, uh, you know, so when you're trying to address that, how do you do that as a community and as a family? Well, I, I think you just named the, the great concern as as we, as, as a church, I'll just speak for the Pine Hill Congregational Church, but as we make our discernment on whether or not to reopen it, or I mean, or when to reopen rather, um, we, we are trying to live out uh, being a good neighbor, and that means thinking about the the broad scope of ages and representation in our congregation. So we are constantly thinking about those most vulnerable in the elderly when we make our decisions. I think sometimes I, it may have changed, but I know early on it was our senior members of the congregation that were so eager to get back quickly and it was um, the, the rest of us that were much more reserved and, and cautious and concerned. I think that's leveled out a little bit as as understanding of the pandemic has spread but but we are trying to look out for those who are most vulnerable in our in our population. Reverend Dr. Charles Packer with us here on the Megacast. He's the senior minister for the Pine Hill Congressional Church and with that Reverend what the church isn't more than a community. It's a family for some. How have you been able to fill in those gaps during this past year? We know so many people are going virtual. Well, and yes, um, and we are very fortunate that in the Pine Hill Congregational Church, um, most of our people actually, and I'm so grateful for this, but most of our folks are able uh, to get on to Zoom, uh, the Zoom flat platform. I know that's not the case in all communities. Now we do have a small group that is unable to be connected in that way. And so I give my my leadership of the church just so such high marks because consistently they ask the question at our monthly virtual meetings, uh, how can we reach out to those who we don't see on Zoom? And so there are phone calls made. I know I make phone calls, other people do, cards are sent. Um, we actually print out all of our worship materials from bulletins to my sermon to prayers, and they get they get postal mail to each person every week um, who can't get on, on Zoom. And we also send out, we have a weekly e-blast to our membership. And for those who aren't internet accessible, we have a member, a deacon who prints out um, what we call the Pine Needle, we're Pine Hill. And so it's the Pine Needle, the weekly news that gives the prayer concerns and that sort of thing. So our folks are constantly receiving contact from us and we, we hope it's enough. Right, it's so connected. you're trying to fill in the gaps, anywhere right. those gaps may exist. Absolutely. I, uh, so we try to look at our blessings during this time. What have you found to be the overall blessings for your church? I think a big blessing has been that we have been able to be community and family in a different way. Um, and 
And by that, it has been so wonderful that our members, our very active members who moved to Colorado two years ago, are able to be with us almost every single Sunday from Colorado. And, and by Zoom technology, we're able to see them. We're, we're able to interact with them. Um, our snowbirds that go to Florida or Arizona, for example, have been able to connect with us. Um, we're able to see them through the winter season, which we weren't able to do. Um, we had some that participated for the first time in a Christmas Eve service with us because we were on Zoom. And we have people even in the state who have moved away, um, a, a family that's moved up north uh, and to Boyne City area, and they're able to connect with us. So that has been a real blessing that we've been able to find new ways to connect for the seasons of Advent and Lent. Our deacons put together bags with special items for the season. Um, like for Lent, we put in candles and a cross and seeds for Easter, a palm branch for Palm Sunday, um, and delivered, or, well, people picked them up who could from the church. Every family got them. And then for those that couldn't get to us, uh, we divided them up and we took them to their doors. And so, you know, it's been really rewarding to be able to to be community in those new ways. But the church, with it being the community, it's also the, pace, the place where people come together and to mark those special occasions in our life, which is weddings and funerals. What has that side of the house been like for you? Um, it, well, it's it's been interesting for me as a minister to not be officiating at so many of those events. What has been interesting is that I think families have uh, sort of self-selected to um, hold off on a lot of celebrations. I know there have been weddings that have been postponed that I and other uh, people connected to my community have uh, been asked to officiate. Um, there have been deaths that I know will be memorialized after the pandemic passes. Um, people are just remarkably resilient and understanding. And that's that's been a wonderful thing to realize during this time. Um, even as difficult as it is to not be able to be in person and really celebrate those things in the moment as we all would like to do. So we are speaking with Reverend Dr. Charles here on the Megacast. He is the senior minister for the Pine Hill Congressional Church. And with that, there are so many things going on in the world. Um, we have a global pandemic right now. People are worried about life and death and the health and their safety of their loved ones. But racism has also been brought to the forefront during this trying time in our nation. Your thoughts on that? Because I do know that you're an advocate and you are a part of the interfaith community. Uh, yes, um, and and I'll uh, touch first on, on the um, uh, issue of, of race in our society right now. It, it has come to the forefront. Um, and and it, it's certainly tragic the ways in which it has. Um, I think that if, if churches and religious organizations choose to, they can see this as an opportunity, a, a real educational moment to enter into that dialogue and really try to make a difference, to, um, to bring us closer to uh, to realizing in, in Christianity, it would be the vision of the kingdom of God that, that Jesus taught, uh, but, but more broadly, you know, the beloved community that, of which Martin Luther King Jr. spoke uh, and preached. And so um, I know at the Pine Hill Congregational Church, um, we've actually held um, a, a series, uh, a book discussion series on uh, White Fragility by Robin DiAngelo. We did a discussion of the um, uh, 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 the the recent movie, um, and now that the name is is uh, uh, escaping me, but uh, don't think about it for uh, a second; it, it'll come it, to you. <laughs> it'll come back to me anyway. Sorry about that. But um, at any rate, we're hoping to actually do more of that as a denomination or as an association of churches. Uh, my church belongs to the National Association of Congregational Christian Churches, and um, and. Uh, uh, our National Association has just recently formed a racial justice task team and they've made um, virtual programming available. Right now we're going through a three-part series 
of um, uh, looking at chronicles, uh, conversations in our Christian faith, and we're, we're raising issues about racial justice and tapping into uh, our churches and our ministers who are African-American, listening to their experience and trying to figure out how we can communicate better in our congregations and, and make a difference. So there is a lot of energy and movement, both locally and regionally and nationally as well. How are you able to reach the members of your congregation with that lesson and that teaching when they're not in your pews? Um, it's amazing. We've done everything by Zoom. And if, if I mean, a year and a half ago, if, if anyone would have said that we'd be holding our meetings and our classes and our educational discussion and retreats, I've done an Advent retreat and a Lenten retreat by Zoom, not to mention every regular Sunday and special worship service via Zoom. Um, I, I wouldn't have believed it, but um, but our folks have been remarkably adaptive to that, and we've been able to do things that I never would have imagined that we would have been able to do. But we do it all virtually, and we do uh, have that feeling or that sense of community that's different than being in person, but still viable. And we're still trying to reach as many people as possible with us right now on the Megacast. Reverend Dr. Charles Packer, he is the senior minister for the Pine Hill Congressional Church. And with that, um, Reverend, if I could talk to you just a moment, I know that um, you are a big part of the Waterford Refugee Welcome Alliance. Tell us more about that. Um, in 2016, the Township of Waterford Board passed a symbolic resolution uh, that in, in, a, in essence was um, meant, it was a statement that the township would uh, decline to encourage the settlement of Syrian refugees in Waterford Township. Um, and, and there were a lot of, I think, um, political discussions around that at that time that led up to that. Um, but there were many, particularly in the religious communities, clergy and other, that said, this does not speak, this does not communicate to the houses of worship or really even to the spirit of Waterford Township that really feels that it, it wants to be welcoming and open and not fearful and hostile. And so the Waterford Refugee Welcome Alliance formed to try to uh, change hearts and minds uh, locally and regionally as much as possible. And uh, I, uh, Reverend John Nagel of Christ Lutheran Church in Waterford was the, the founder of that organization. And when he retired uh, in 2018, a member of his church and, and I took on the uh, responsibilities of co-facilitating that organization. We've had, um, you know, one to two educational programs open to the public every year. We try to do some advocacy. We, uh, a number of faith communities in the area participate in collections to help benefit refugee families that are settled in the area that are lacking of resources, um, even basic resources like fans in the summertime uh, or winter clothing, because they may have come from a place in which uh, winter wasn't the reality that it is here in Michigan. Um, and so we, we do really, really want to raise the consciousness about the issue. We're glad that Waterford is really one of the only, uh, the only that I know of uh, community in Southeast Michigan that did pass such a resolution. But, um, but we, we do want to, you know, raise the issue uh, in, in hearts and minds throughout out the area as well. And with that, you think about the courage it takes for some of the people to come over here and not even being able to speak the language and not having the resources. They are relying on this to be able to make them become successful members of our society and thrive as yes. well. Uh, and, and that pays back in generations to come. But as a minister, as a man as an individual, uh, what have you learned from being a part of of the uh, uh, the community in the center? Um, in terms of the uh, refugee issue, yes. Um, I would say that that I think that there is a great spirit among everyone to be to try to be a good neighbor. And with regard to, to refugees, what I've learned about the refugees that have come, come over is that there are a large number that had to leave um, 
jobs for which they received multiple years of education, invested a lot of funds, and they come over to this country and they can't hold those positions. So they take other positions and they just, they, they want to contribute. They want to be a part of the community and they want to be as much of a, a neighbor as possible. And it's been heartening to me when people do respond to our educational events that, that there just does seem to be um, really at the core a desire to be neighborly, to not put up those walls or boundaries. And that, so, that's encouraging. That is so encouraging. And with that, um, what, did, what do you want the community to know? Like, how can they get involved and why should they get involved? Um, well, I think that uh, we as a, a Waterford Refugee Welcoming Alliance have found that um, there are some agencies out there that are doing remarkable work. And so I would recommend trying to connect with um, SARN, the Syrian American Rescue Network, Samaritas, Lutheran Social Services, Catholic Charities. Those are all organizations that we work closely with and that I know um, all um, facilitate handling of resources and getting donated resources to the, the refugee individual family individuals and families that are in need of them and so those are three organizations that I would I would try to seek out and see what uh, uh, can be done to assist their efforts our community is better when we lift one another up Reverend dr. Charles Pecker with us here on the mega cast he's the senior minister for the Pine Hill Congressional Church. And with that, Reverend, when do you anticipate you will be back in service, in person service? Um, I believe that, I, I'm hoping that it will be by summer. Um, we keep sort of setting dates ahead of time in, in hopes. I mean, for most of this year, we've been saying we're going to be uh, have our building closed through through April 30th and look at May 1st. Um, we, our board of trustees will look in April and see if we need to extend uh, that that period of time a bit. And so um, it, we're, we're hopeful sooner than later, but I, I, I'm, I'm really strongly hopeful it'll be in the summer. Um, so how does the vaccine play into that rollout plan? Certainly, we are, um, as a community, most of us, you know, we don't ever compel anyone to tell us, Sorry, have you been vaccinated? Have you had one shot or two shots? But it's just been sort of natural that when we have our fellowship time on Sunday mornings before the service begins, that um, people are asking one another, okay, have you gotten, gotten the call? Have you gotten the vaccine? And I have just noticed that over the last two months, as those, that sort of sharing has taken place, that a, a, a vast number of our members have received at least one shot by now. Um, it, it's a significant number. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit on the, the young side for the shot myself. And so I'm just now getting on lists and hoping to get called sooner than later. But, um, but the vast majority of the congregation has at least begun the process. And that's really a, a bright spot for us. There's just a lot of celebration around that in our community when we do hear that someone has um, gone in and received the vaccination. So with that, uh, Reverend Dr. Charles Packer with us here on the Megacast. He is the senior minister for the Pine Hill Congressional Church. And Pastor, if I can um, ask you about this, we know that the Catholic Church is asking their members to possibly, if they can pick and choose, to get the Johnson & Johnson vaccine versus the Pfizer and Moderna. Your thoughts on that, or you just want a healthy congregation? I want a healthy congregation, and and I I believe I, if I'm remembering correctly that a lot of our members have gotten uh, Moderna or or the other. I mean, they've gotten a variety of them, and so um, I'm I'm certainly not uh, pushing one over the other, and and believe and trust that there are many good minds that can better advice and counsel on that but but i'm just really grateful when when uh, people are feeling safer and and vaccinated and protected in that way well we know that so many people um love 
going to their church to seek that solace and to seek that guidance. We know that a church is more than the doors that you walk through. And this past year has reminded all of us of that. Uh, Reverend Dr. Charles Packer with us here. He's with the Pine Hill Congressional Church. Anything maybe I didn't touch on that you wanna add before we say goodbye for the day? Um, I, I do want to mention something. You, you had mentioned that I am involved with uh, interfaith work, and I am on the board of the Interfaith Leadership Council of Metropolitan Detroit, and uh, we do a number of things to, to bring uh, different faith communities and traditions together. Um, we live in a diverse region in Southeast Michigan, and I do want to plug an event, if I could, that's taking place tonight at 7 p.m., a virtual event, um, over many, many months, um, uh, our education committee, uh, which I co-chair of the Interfaith Leadership Council, um, put together a video of interviews with brief, short interviews with 10 area artists of different media and different faith traditions, Jewish, Christian, and Muslim. And we are debuting that video tonight. We're going to show it uh, this evening virtually and we are uh, going to uh, have nine of the 10 artists interviewed available for question and answer after, and I'm moderating that tonight. Um, then after tonight, it will be available on the Interfaith Leadership Council website for $20, not much, $20 to purchase, and it can be shown, uh, it can be viewed as individuals, but it can also be shown to groups, particularly during this pandemic. We wanted something inspiring and creative to be out there and available to our community to be able to be viewed visual, uh, visually and virtually. Um, and if anyone wants a link to that event, they can email me at drcapacker at gmail.com, drcapacker at gmail.com, and I'll be glad to connect them uh, with a link to that event. But uh, we're really excited about the debut of this video. But it's, it's one example of the many things the Interfaith Leadership Council tries to do to bring people together and enhance understanding. That's beautiful because understanding starts with a conversation. What time again does the event start and how late can someone email you to get a link? Thank you. Um, 7 p.m. and it would be really great if I could get um, any email requests by 4 p.m. Yeah, because you might be a little busy before the event, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. A few things going on. Yes. Well, we thank you so much for not only your time, but also your passion and your commitment to our community. Reverend Dr. Charles Pecker, he's the senior minister for the Pine Hill Congressional Church. And again, if you want a link to that event for tonight, uh, just email him, drcapacker at gmail.com. Please do so by 4 p.m. The event starts at 7.